रोशनी का कारवां दिस पॉडकास्ट इज ब्रॉट टू यू बाय स्कोर फाउंडेशन Hi my name is George Abraham and welcome to IWA Conversations my guest today is Hannah Alice Simon a very special and a highly gifted young lady from Kerala hi hannah welcome hi george well thank you so much for having me with you so to begin with uh, let me congratulate you on this spectacular performance at the cbse exams this year and thank you uh, so much and let me begin by asking you what is the 99.2 story what has been your preparation uh, how did you write your exam and what was the support you got i want to start with a bible verse that has led me all these years of my life and that is isaiah chapter 42 verse 16 which says i will lead the blind by ways that they have not known along unfamiliar paths i will guide them i will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth these are the things that i will do i will not forsake them uh, just like the bible was god has always turned the darkness into light before me my mother used to say that when i was really young they obviously were tensed and worried about me and they used to think how i would walk on my own how i would live on my own and now here i am with such a such a big score in the cbse board exams and life has always been full of miracles and god has always done so much more than we expected and the journey till here uh it was not easy but then it was not <clears throat> a journey of sorrow life has both sorrow and happiness and i had a good share of both of them i studied in a normal school from the very beginning my parents were very insistent on that and i faced challenges there in terms of inclusion but every challenge i faced and overcame made me stronger and uh in 10th i decided that i i wanted to become a psychologist so in 11th and 12th i pursued i studied humanities psychology of which economics was the most challenging but due to god's grace i was able to score 100% in economics psychology and sociology and 99% in politics and 97 for english how did you actually uh prepare for these exams there would have been a lot of reading to be done there would be also classes so what has been uh, your learning uh, strategy i did have access to the pdf versions of my textbooks and there were the notes that i took down on my computer basically these were the these are the only preparations that a humanity student studying in the cbsc needs she should be thorough with the textbook that is the first and foremost thing and because it is a uh, humanities you should have an act of writing an act of presenting your answers very well uh, our teachers had trained us in that and because i read a lot i have sufficient language so even if a question comes uh, which is more general in nature i can somehow put together the information that i know and present it well so i was able to do that and i also studied the textbook very well i did not depend on um, any other extra additional textbooks except perhaps the uh, during the last few months our teachers gave us sample question papers and things like that i studied that but i did not depend on any other extra textbooks other than what the school gave me coming to the examination uh, what was the kind of um, uh, preparation you had to do in terms of the logistics of the exam and uh, uh, how did you give the exam uh, i have permi- permission from cbse to write my exams on the computer last last time when 10th board exams were happening i used jaws as my software as my screen reader this time i asked them if i could use nvda they gave me permission for that and that's how i did it uh so for the first term exam it was all mcq questions and 
all the students had to bubble their answers cbse did not give me an alternative for that in the beginning and then what we uh, finally figured out is i would write all the answers in a word document in the computer and there would be a teacher who would be with me and she would bubble the same answer that i wrote on the computer in the proper answer paper so it is kind of like a scribe but i am also simultaneously typing the answers on the computer and they'll keep a copy of that too um and in the second term that was not a problem because the second term examinations were completely descriptive so it was the usual thing i would write my answers in a word document uh, the school would take a print out of it and then they would send it for evaluation so the question paper uh, uh, was uh, uh, available to you online uh, no it wasn't uh, so what they did is cbse has a rule stating that the question paper bundles can be opened only at a specific time yeah. only uh, i think 15 minutes before the answers uh, uh, before the examination starts so uh, i went to a different school to write my exam i went to bhavan the teachers there after opening the question paper they would use an ocr and they would scan the question paper and then they would give it to me with the help of a pen drive and sometimes most of the time it took a, a little more time for the question paper to be completely scanned so i had to start my exams late but they adjusted the time accordingly and sometimes scanning can be a little inaccurate and there were mistakes here and there but the teachers were supportive so whenever there was a mistake they clarified it for me and they typed in the correct words um so i think without the teachers support i couldn't have done it i would have faced a lot of problems but they were constantly supporting me even though they were not te- the teachers from my own school but did you get any extra time because uh, the uh, cbse rules does say that a blind student gets 20 minutes per hour extra was there any of that kind of provision for you or that was yes i did get extra time so for uh, the first term exam which was one and a half hours i uh, i got half an hour extra uh, and for the second term exam which was 2 hours i got 40 minutes extra if you know of anyone with vision impairment who needs guidance on living life with blindness please share the iway national toll free helpline number 1800532045 The number is one eight zero zero five three two zero four six nine. Now I believe uh, you said that you had studied in a in a in a mainstream school. Talk about your experiences in the school. I started my education in grades. They gave uh, the principal the uh, management was really. good in that way that they gave me the admission but my first year lkg i i just sat in class that's all i can say the teacher never bothered to teach me anything she went on with her work she taught the alphabets to her to the others so that was my first year my mother taught me i can see a little i can see colors and i can see large letters so initially she used to buy marker pens and a white board and she taught me the alphabet i learned capital letters numbers and i also learned malayalam letters and hindi letters i've forgotten how the hindi letters are now but i learned all of them just because i grew up in a family where my parents told me that you are not different when i was in first grade my mother learned braille and then she started teaching me and i started using braille from 5th grade onwards i started taking notes in braille that was also slightly hard because when you write in braille you have to use a lot of force to make sure that the dots appear on the chart paper and then in 8th grade i shifted to using the computer i was initially very reluctant to uh, adapt uh, to learn how to uh, use technology very well but the uh, resource room teachers in my school in rajagiri they are the ones who compelled me to uh, start using computers and when i started using computers things became much more easier 
earlier i had to rush to keep up with my friends when i was taking notes in braille now even before they have finished the sentence i would have finished the sentence i would have finished typing and i would be waiting from 6th grade i had learned to download the pdf textbooks and that's how i learned but maths was a problem because the pdf versions were not really accessible in terms of diagrams and figures so till 9th grade my mother taught me maths and then in 10th uh, grade i had a tuition teacher who taught me maths and even for geometry i had no tactile aids or anything like that so my tuition teacher would trace the figures with my finger and i had to memorize them in my mind learn which is angle a which is angle b all of that and then i had to solve the the questions and then uh, about the other subjects like social science or science where you have maps and diagrams usually uh, the teachers gave me an or question which did not involve any of that growing up hana in school uh, did you get an opportunity to participate in games and physical fitness activities um i i still remember in lkg and ukg we had running races and i wanted to run but the teachers wouldn't let me i came home and i told my mother about it and my mother was very fierce when it came to me and if anybody hurt me she would become very fierce and angry so she made it a point to go and speak to the teacher and she told her that i also wanted to run and she had to let me run so i i remember um, everyone ran and in the last group i was also placed and i also ran i did come uh, at the very last but still i was able to run that day and uh, later on in 5th grade i shifted to rajagiri again when we had physical education initially the teacher did not could not accept that i also wanted to run again this excessive care thing came in where he thought that i would fall but i told him that i wanted to play too that was a time when i i wanted to explore everything and i my best friend megna she was very supportive about this so uh i could not play basketball but i could play dodgeball so what we did is when we were inside the ring and when the others were throwing the ball at us me and megna would hold hands and we would just move together and we did have code words like jump lose your hands smooth things like that and i used to have so much fun with her playing dodgeball we used to uh we used to come out of school a little early and before we got into the bus we would go to the playground and we used to run 100 meters back and forth and do things like that and at that time i was a huge enid blyton and mallory towers fan even my friend was and mallory towers enid blyton if you have read them you will understand how much importance the characters plays on being fit and healthy having freckled skin and That's being sun bathed so i was like a huge fan of mallory towers and if the characters in that book were fit and healthy and loved basketball and lacrosse and all of that and i had to be like that too so those years my middle school years i was really into all of this and again in 9th standard uh, we had compulsory gym there my gym teachers my sir and ma'am were really supportive so our gym sessions started with jogging and while the others jog in a separate line my friend and i could jog in a more open space where there were no obstacles my my uh, teacher made sure of that and they also made sure that i also could uh, do all the circuit training learn all the moves those two teachers were very inclusive about that To support our work with the blind and visually impaired you can visit the donate page on our website www.scorefoundation.org.in please note www.scorefoundation.org.in tell me a little bit about your eye problem uh, is this something that you were born with or this is something that you acquired along the way 
I was born blind, but it is not a genetic condition. It's called microphthalmia, and it basically means that during my mother's pregnancy, when all my organs were developing, my eyes did not develop sufficiently. And it's not just my cornea, but also my internal, uh, the internal part of my eyes did not develop. What are your memories of your early days growing up as a child? Childhood was frankly a very insecure period for me. And usually, every every person, his favorite childhood memories would be those friend uh, spend with his friends, playing, uh, running around, and doing things like that. But for me, my best childhood memories are those spent with my parents because at that point of life, they were the only people I really had. They were the only constants in my life. So, um, because I can see lights. I have, I love lights and colors. So when I was really small, we used to go on night rides. We used to drive through, through the streets and they used to show me all the lights. And if uh, we have on here in Kerala, so they would, uh, when we went to a shop, they would take me to see the Pukalam. They would make me feel the Pukalam. They would make me shake hands with the Santa Claus during Christmas. They made sure that I had all the experiences that any other child would have. When other children just took in things with their eyes and saw for themselves, because I couldn't do that, my parents became my eyes. You are uh, quite an accomplished musician. But uh, I've heard you say uh, in one of your videos that uh, you were a reluctant musician. What's the story of your music? My parents discovered... Uh, from my early childhood that I could sing. My mother also sings. So it was natural that I also had this talent. But what happens is many people have this conception that blind people can sing. It's like a default thing. If you are blind, then you should be good at singing. And in school, uh, every music competition, they would choose me. And I was really privileged to go for those music competitions. But for me, at that time, I used to think like this. Why only music? Because I really loved acting in plays at that time. I wanted to dance. I wanted to do everything else except music. And I never got the chance to do that. Right. It was just music, music, music. So when you have too much of a thing, you, you move away from it. Right. And at a point... Music became my only over, o, overshadowing identity. So Hannah became the girl who sings very well. And Thanks. I didn't like that at all. That is why I moved away from music. I stopped learning music. And then in sixth grade, we had an environmental conservation program for which my friend and I composed a song about nature. That was the beginning of my journey returning back to music. Uh, and in seventh grade, one year later, my father asked me this question. He asked me, Hannah, you compose songs about Mother Nature, which is really good. But why don't you compose a song to praise Jesus who has loved you so much all these years? And that is how my first song, Jesus by My Side, was born. And then I realized that this was what I was meant to do, to become an instrument of God. And... Once you know that you are an instrument of God, then you have to praise his name in the best way possible. So I decided to train my voice again. I started taking music classes under Radhika Ma'am, who runs an institute called the Soul of Music. I did my Trinity College London 8th grade exams in Western Classical and Rock and Pop. And right now, music is not my only identity, but music is a part of my identity. How did you um, uh, start going about doing this motivational speaking? What are the platforms where you speak? What do you speak about? Uh, the journey to motivational speaking began with my music itself. So my first song, Jesus by My Side, was chosen as one of the songs to be taught during the vacation Bible school sessions of my church, the yeah. Jacobite church. Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, in 7th and 8th and even 9th, I, I taught them three of my songs. I traveled to churches all across Kerala. And while I taught them, I also started sharing my story with them about how God had helped me so much and how he had, he had made me grow so much and how he had told me that I was not different, but 
just special, born to do something that only I can do in this world. So that is how it began. And then from there, I slowly started taking motivational sessions in schools and colleges. I recently had one session in Alua Blind School. And I also was invited to speak uh, through online platforms to Christian communities outside India, in the Middle East and in Australia. So now that you've finished your 12th standard and now you're looking towards college, so what are your immediate plans? I got admission in a prestigious college in the US. It's the University of Notre Dame. It's really good for psychology and I'm also planning to major in psychology while also minoring in creative writing and music. And I also got a full scholarship from the university, which covers my uh, expenses, the education, the cost of education, as well as my room and board. Uh, so that, that was a big miracle in our lives. Colleges and universities in the U.S. have uh, a lot of facilities for uh, students who are differently abled. So I think uh, you would enjoy it. Yeah, they've already made the textbooks accessible to me. They have contacted me. They have connected me to other students with visual impairment. They have made sure that I feel safe and secure in the university. You know, we talked about your studies. We talked about your plans. Um, so uh, what is it that you do outside, say, your um, studies, your music and your speaking? Is there any passion that you have which uh, you use when you're alone that you pursue? I mainly read. Other than the time I spend on studies, I mainly read. I read a lot and I'm an avid reader. I'm a, I'm a big book lover. Initially, my father used to tell me stories when I was a toddler. Then my parents started reading out books to me. And in fourth standard, I learned how to read books on the computer. Even before I learned to type fast on the, uh, in a Word document, I had learned how to read books years back because reading was so close to my heart and it was a necessity for me to learn to read books on my own. So in fourth standard, uh, I got access to books. Initially, I used uh, sites like Gutenberg.org, which yeah. has books whose copyright law uh, is expired. Yeah. Um, and for a long time, till I think 11th grade ended, I was mainly reading books which were written during the period of the early 20th century. And yeah. um, the, uh, I really loved the books written during that period, especially books related to World War and all of that. And later on, I was introduced to other sites, including Bookshare. And now I am... As a reader, I am in an exploratory stage. I am reading everything. So, Hannah, very nice talking to you and uh, wish you the very best as you travel to the U.S. to further your uh, academic career. Thank you so much. I this podcast was brought to you by Score Foundation.